Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and somebody who's keeping a close eye on what's been going on at Disney, especially the executive changes, some of the failures of the recent movies, the disappointments with Wakanda Forever. The choices that Disney has been making over the last few years have not been good. They haven't been good business sense choices. This is something that really does need to be corrected. I don't think Bob Iger is going to be able to correct it. There's a recent article talking about how there's going to be some changes in the management and the guy who wrote this article, industry executives predict return of Staggs, which is Tom Staggs and Kevin Mayer, Iger extending his contract, McCarthy leaving, and more Disney changes in 2023. Well, if Staggs, Tom Staggs, and Kevin Mayer are back with Disney, they could actually fix the company. I don't know if they're going to still make woke content or not of what they're going to do, but they could actually fix the company. This is the same guy that predicted Iger would be returning in 2022. So you've got to kind of go by that and say, all right, well, they knew what they were talking about. But Disney right now is freaking out. They have all kinds of problems. A lot of them were Bob Iger's fault. They have debt. The acquisition of Fox, which is what brought in this Avatar movie, was incredibly expensive. It was $71 billion. I still don't blame Iger for that because it was a tough situation. They didn't know what was going to go on with streaming. They didn't have Disney Plus at the time. But now what they have on their hands is Avatar 2. It's not doing the numbers that they were projecting, and they weren't projecting enormous numbers. Now, Bob Iger, as soon as he got back to Disney, a couple of days later, China opened up and said, oh, sure, we'll distribute Avatar 2. A lot of people were saying, well, you know, China could really save Avatar 2. Maybe they'll do $300 million because they did over $200 million with Avatar 1. Even with that, I always like to state, don't forget, China only gives you 25 cents on the dollar as opposed to domestic markets gives you 50 cents on the dollar. Normal international markets, you get 40 cents on the dollar. So even if China did do $300 million, it's just $75 million. Now I would like $75 million, but I'm not trying to cover like a billion dollar budget that James Cameron says, like it, it does have a very big budget to do Avatar 2. There was anywhere from 350 million to as much as 450 million spent on producing Avatar 2. How could it cost that much to make? Well, James Cameron is James Cameron. And apparently nobody tells him no. He can just do whatever he wants. Now, he is a legend. And if I had the opportunity to work with him, I would try to say yes to anything he said. But this is Bob Iger's fault. He should have had a conversation with James Cameron about his deal with Fox when they were doing the acquisition. Cameron seems like a reasonable guy. He's someone you could talk to, but at the same time, he's pretty crazy about the runtime. He's not even willing to have a reasonable conversation about it. Three hours and 12 minutes runtime? You know, here's a couple of articles. James Cameron blasts trolls for Avatar hate, whining over runtime. It's not about whining over runtime. The reason that Avatar can't be 24 hours, let's say, is because that would be ridiculous, right? Theaters were not designed for three hour and 12 minute runtimes. The distribution system was designed for it wasn't designed for 3D either, and they made 3D kind of work, and then it lost favor, and now Avatar is doing pretty well, apparently, in 3D. And, you know, that's wonderful, but you have to understand, if you're going to try and change the whole distribution system, it's going to have potential problems. It's going to put an extra burden on things. Now, uh, people have approached uh, James Cameron before. He claims he cursed out a Fox executive who urged him to make Avatar shorter. I don't I don't know what it is. It, it, they have to have some kind of, you have to have a working relationship with talent, whatever you're doing. I make comic books. So if you're making comics, films, whatever it is that you're doing, you have to have communication between people. They have to understand some of the realities of things. You want to give creative people the opportunity to be incredibly passionate, do what they've always dreamed to do, but at the same time, look at what James Cameron has done. So he's got this movie, it's three hours and 12 minutes, plus, you know, in the beginning of the movie, you're gonna get into the theater, you're gonna get out of the theater, you're gonna have transportation time. It could be five hours to commit to seeing a sequel to one of his movies. Like, you know, if you've seen Avatar 1, you've kind of, you know what Avatar 2 is. It's not gonna blow you away in the same way, but even if it did, even if you could give it that five hours, and a lot of people have, not enough,
But still, you're not gonna go back twice to see it. This is the problem. People have written in my comments, I did this video a day or two ago about the panic at Disney over it being obvious that this film is not gonna break even theatrically. Now, that does not mean that they're gonna lose millions and millions of dollars on this movie. It just means they'll make some money theatrically, and they've already made some, they'll make more, but they're gonna still have to like use their streaming rights, use the physical media, use the international sales, digital downloads to get all of their money back to make Avatar 2 ultimately like break even, no loss, and maybe make a little bit of a profit. But maybe it doesn't even do that. It, there was so many resources spent on producing this, promoting it, and marketing it. The problem is James Cameron might get what he wants if he wanted to have a three hour and 12 minute movie. But now you've got a franchise that's not really a franchise. You can't, if you can't keep making the movies because it's not financially viable, because people don't make movies to break even. They make movies to make a profit if it's a studio. You know, the creator might want to just see his movie made. So Avatar 3 is already done. Avatar 3 is going to happen. The trades are pushing and saying, oh, you know, nobody in Hollywood, and this one just came out, Avatar The Way of the Water, box office jury is out on whether sequel will ride the waves or drift while the big budget tentpole opened notably below tracking forecasts, so less than Wakanda Forever. It's doing less than Wakanda Forever in projections. The international is still pretty impressive, but just the same, it's doing less. But supposedly, how no one in Hollywood is ready to write off James Cameron's long-awaited sequels. They're gonna get Ava Avatar 3 because the thing's been produced. But what's gonna happen is the franchise is gonna die because Bob Iger couldn't sit down and have a sensible conversation with James Cameron and explain, hey, look, I have investors I need to deal with. I have theater owners I need to deal with. I'm in the franchise business. You have a beautiful film. Help me make this work so we can keep making more and more of these movies and continue to tell the story because we can't tell the story if we have to risk a billion dollars every time we make one of your freaking movies and then put all our resources into promoting and distributing this film and then just pray that the thing breaks even. You, you gotta let the studio make a little bit of a profit. If the talent is that focused on, no, I wanna make my story my way. Avatar 3, he just turned in. It's over nine hours long. He wants all the special effects completely done and paid for by Disney and then he'll go and make his edits. I don't know what his format is. I don't know what his process is. He's genius with process and format, I get that. But the problem is that's spending a lot of money for what looks like is really just a break-even proposition. Breaking even is not good enough in business. This is something that the board should even step in and say, look, bring Cameron in here. Let's all have a conversation about what reasonable expectations really mean. And let's make a plan together so that this works. Hopefully Iger is out of there pretty soon and they can get uh, Kevin Mayer in there. He's fantastic. He's the guy who launched this guy. He launched uh, Disney Plus, did a great job. You can Google interviews with him, look him up on YouTube. You'll see he's absolutely sharp as a tack. The guy knows what he's talking about. And Tom Staggs, also a great guy. that he, They're currently in business together with a media venture and Disney will wind up probably buying it out and they'll probably come on. Christine McCarthy, who looks like she is a Disney villain. A lot of people comment in my comments about that. I can't disagree. That's her official photo. She does look like a Disney villain. She's not going to be CEO, probably, probably not. Probably it's these two guys if they feel like doing it. If they don't feel like doing it, Disney has a really serious problem in leadership because this issue with James Cameron should have been dealt with when Iger was still CEO the first time. I don't even blame Chapek for this. And I blame Chapek, if you follow my videos, for a lot of things, not for this. Iger is the one that bought into this deal when they acquired Fox. Iger is the one now responsible to sit down and try to figure out with Cameron, how could they make movies going forward and make money? Because you got, they gotta make money. TMZ, solid opening box office, but still underperforming. It, it's disappointing because for years and years and years, you put money and resources and time and creativity into these projects, but there's no profit to be made out of it. And if there's no profit, then there's no franchise. Then the whole thing just dies on the vine. You know, it's, it becomes something that was done five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and everyone's gonna just forget about it. Because it's not like the story is gonna stand on its own. People don't even know the names of the Avatar cast characters. That's a story problem. But in addition to that, you know, you would know, like, I know that one of the minions is named Kevin. I know that because minions is fun to watch. The budget of minions, $80 million, 
World, the last one, Rise of Gru, international box office was like $930 million. Minions is going to go on forever. It's going to be a part of the culture. But this stuff, where they indulge James Cameron too much, and as a result, look at this box office results. This isn't terrible. But $134 million domestic, they were talking about as much as $200 million domestic or $175 million. This is a massive, massive reduction. They have China helping with $57.1 million. But they were going for they were looking for more than 100 million opening in China. They're not going to get it. They didn't get it. They're not going to get 300 million out of China. So this film is going to probably do a billion or 1.2 billion. That's that's what I'm projecting. Now, that's a lot of money. I'd love to have a billion dollars to play around with. I don't have it. But when you deduct all the costs of production and all of the costs of promotion and the years invested in this just to break even. This is a disaster, and you know they're having this conversation at Disney now. I don't see Iger talking with uh, Cameron unless Iger is telling Cameron, hey, I just want to support you. Congratulations on the opening. I'm sure things are going to go well. And it's just basically being supportive, which is the kind of thing that Iger always does. And it's nice to support people, but they need to they need to resolve this. I hope that the woke stuff gets out of Disney. And maybe by woke stuff, somebody asked me in comments below. I'm talking about what they did in Phase 4. I'm talking about She-Hulk, the example of you tell a superhero story, and the superhero really isn't responsible to protect the community like what superheroes typically do, ultimately wind up being like a villain. You know, they, they serve no function as a hero. All of the great power without great responsibility is throughout Phase 4. A complete waste of resources. So to be woke, they redefined everything. And that's what I mean when I'm talking about woke. As far as Avatar goes, I hope they can continue the franchise because it's this was important. It was a milestone for the culture to produce Avatar 1 in 2009. So yeah, they'll produce an Avatar 3. But unless they have a serious conversation with James Cameron, unless someone can talk to him and explain, look, no, we, we should not be making films that we can't make a profit on, and it's not going to continue in perpetuity. You can't just kill a franchise and kill a story just because you want an extra hour of runtime. What are you doing with that extra hour of runtime anyway? And if people don't want to invest the time in seeing it because the thing is too damn long, what good is it as a creator? This is what happens with too much self-indulgence. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you going to see Avatar 3? Do you think more than three hours for a film really makes sense unless there's some incredible reason for it? And it doesn't seem like Avatar 2 has that reason. But let me know what you think of that, please, in the comments below. Always appreciate your comments. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.